Um, my name is Kathy Jeffrey, and um, welcome to Partners in Pain. I'm, I'll be your facilitator for today's session. It's just my great honor uh, to be able to do this. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we begin and as we gather today, it's important we acknowledge that we are on treaty land. So today I'm coming to you from Saskatoon, which is Treaty 6 territory, and we pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Uh, before I get started, we get started, I just want to give you a bit of information about how this webinar series came to be. Partners in Pain grew out of the Improving Pain in Saskatchewan Collaborative Research Project. The aim of the research project is to improve how pain is managed in our province by giving pain a voice and bringing people together to share information and plan for action. The research project led to our first pilot series of Partner in Pain webinars in March 2021, just in time for the uh, end of the COVID, we hoped, right? The feedback from the pilot was very positive and led the research team to seek additional funding to continue to offer the webinars. Um, the project received a Community Initiatives Fund grant in mid-2021 for an additional series of webinars, which is what brings us here today. The vision of the Community Initiatives Fund is to enhance the quality of life for all Saskatchewan people. All of this work is also supported by Sask Pain, an organization which is on a mission to help improve the lives of those living with pain in Saskatchewan. And you might want to check out, if you haven't yet, the Sask Pain website, saskpain.ca. I just want to take a minute to acknowledge the Improving Pain in Saskatchewan Research Team, the Community Initiatives Fund, and Sask Pain. This webinar is truly a testament to the things, the great things that can happen when people with a common vision and mission come together to take action. And uh, we're going to go straight into our first speaker, who's Tracy Fickner. Um, Tracy, had, give us a wave, Tracy. There she is. Uh, Tracy's lived most of her life in the Yorkton area. She's a registered nurse in her 30th year of work in Yorkton. Wow, that's awesome. Tracy worked for 26 years in the Yorkton Hospital, 24 of those in the intensive care unit. As a registered nurse, Tracy thought she knew quite a lot about how to treat pain, but found she was sadly mistaken. After three work-related back, back and shoulder injuries, Tracy was unable to continue working in acute care and now works in primary health care. She has tried many different treatments and still applies multiple approaches to manage her daily chronic pain. Tracy lives in rural Saskatchewan with her husband, who runs a self-employed home construction business. They have two children in post-secondary education. In Saskatchewan, Tracy, your kids going to school? Sort of? One's in Saskatchewan and one's in BC. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, so Tracy, I'll hand it over to you and um, we'll, we're looking forward to your presentation. Okay. Do you see my PowerPoint now? Yep, sure do. Yep. Okay. Um, so um, chronic pain management is especially challenging if we do not have a family physician. It's also challenging if we do have a family physician and experience long wait times to receive care. During this time, people make decisions about how they'll manage their pain, whether they realize it or not. Uh, some people will actively seek out methods to manage their pain, and they're referred to as active self-managers. Others choose to sit quietly, not doing anything that might provoke their pain, and they're referred to as passive self-managers. We all make decisions that affect what we're going to do and when we're going to do them, and this is referred to as self-management. Self-advocacy is the ability to take action to represent one's views or interests, and we can self-advocate by asking a healthcare provider for a referral if needed. Self-referrals are extremely beneficial for chronic pain and self-management. So if we don't have a family physician or nurse practitioner, then we must seek care else. Other options are the Healthy Living Program or Chronic Disease Management Team of Primary Health Care the use of walk-in clinics, by calling Healthline 811, an RN 
you'll initially speak with an RN who assesses your symptoms and then guides your care to attend a walk-in clinic to see your doctor or to access emergency services if necessary. 811 is also staffed with a team of registered psychiatric nurses, social workers, and physicians who may provide care during your call. You can contact Lumica, and the address is on the screen. This is a virtual health consultation tool that connects valid Saskatchewan health card holders to licensed Saskatchewan physicians. A care coordinator reviews your symptoms and directs your care to a physician who may diagnose, treat, prescribe, refer, or advise other forms of health care. You might access a private care clinic. Some communities have a nurse practitioner operating a private clinic. Or you might contact your pharmacist. They have a plethora of knowledge and healthcare equipment options in addition to being able to prescribe some medications. Self-referrals to the Healthy Living Pro program or chronic disease management team from primary health care offer education and care in these areas. Many of these chronic conditions have an element of chronic pain associated with them. The multidisciplinary team of registered nurses, registered dietitians, exercise therapists, and social workers may collaborate to optimize your care. Currently, individual programs are available by phone, virtual care, um, or in office. The REFRESH program is presented via WebEx. Participants learn about stress management, positive coping skills and self-care, assertiveness, communication, mindfulness training, and more. The Live Well with Chronic Conditions and Live Well with Chronic Pain programs are in the process from changing from in-person workshops to telephone and virtual programs. So watch for more to come in this area of self-management. Next, we're going to look at self-referrals to private healthcare professionals. Many extended healthcare plans now cover these medical expenses without a referral from a physician or nurse practitioner. Chiropractors are vital in assessing the alignment of the body. Some offer active release techniques, a manual treatment that works to correct soft tissue restrictions that cause pain and mobility issues. Physiotherapists are the best providers who have the time to comprehensively assess you. They may have an exercise therapist or registered massage therapist to enhance your care with different techniques as described here. When considering massage therapy, it's important to know the provider's training and treatments offered. Many extended healthcare plans only cover registered massage therapist expenses. Your healthcare plan usually has a list of accepted providers. This slide provides an explanation for your future reference when choosing the best provider for your needs, along with the website for Massage Therapist Association of Saskatchewan for more information. But regardless of which massage treatment you choose, do not underestimate the restorative feelings of human touch. However, for pain management or ongoing treatment plans to mitigate health conditions, choose a registered massage therapist. Alternative healthcare provider is the term that registered acupuncturists prefer to use. There are three different levels of certification in Canada. These websites for the Canadian College of Acupuncture and Traditional Chinese Medicine and the Toronto School of Traditional Chinese Medicine are examples of colleges in Canada which explain the therapy. It is important that you know that dry needling and acupuncture are different techniques so you can learn which therapy is right for you. Self-management may include other services to soothe your mind and body. Yoga can play a key role in our mind-body connection and help with gentle range of motion. Art therapy helps to engage our mind in a state of play with a simple task. This helps rewire the brain away from pain and promote a sense of ease. Some of these services are closed due to the pandemic. Keep them in mind when meeting your personal needs in the future. Saskatchewan has programs that accept self-referrals. 
MAC and MAC IOPS refers to the Medication Assessment Center and the Medication Assessment Center Interprofessional Opioid Pain Service. And it's from the University of Saskatchewan College of Pharmacy and Nutrition. MAC is a clinic led by licensed pharmacists who specialize in ensuring that medications are necessary, effective, safe, and convenient for those that use them. A MAC pharmacist can do many things to improve your health and increase your understanding of both your medication and your medical conditions. They offer three clinical services to help patients manage chronic health conditions, chronic pain, and sleep problems. MAC IOPS delivers improved access to specialty chronic pain and or opioid management services. They also provide consultations with physicians and nurse practitioners to help improve your care. This team of pharmacists, social workers, physiotherapists, and dietitian have training and experience in chronic pain management. They collaborate with a physician with an established practice in chronic pain. They also have comprehensive resources to help manage chronic pain. MAC and MAC IOPS offer in-person and virtual care appointments. For more information or to self-refer, access these contact options. MedSask is a program from the University of Saskatchewan College of Pharmacy. Licensed pharmacists provide reliable and accurate information about prescriptions, over-the-counter medications, and herbal remedies. Their services supplement information and advice provided by your local doctor or pharmacist, and they can provide medication support when your doctor or pharmacist is not available. They respond to drug questions 365 days of the year, free of charge, and all calls are completely confidential. Self-referrals can easily be made by accessing these contact options. Eat Well Saskatchewan is a dietitian call center from the University of Saskatchewan College of Pharmacy and Nutrition. This service provides free, confidential, and easy access to the trusted advice of registered dietitians to help you make healthier food choices and answer your food and nutrition questions. Again, self-referrals can easily be made by accessing these contact options. Some referrals to specialists and programs require a thorough assessment and a formal referral from your physician or nurse practitioner. Sometimes the healthcare provider will take the lead in making the referral. However, sometimes we need to initiate this discussion by self-advocating. Pain clinics, the spine pathway, and the pelvic floor pathway can be vital for chronic pain management. Specific pain conditions and management may require more than simply self-referring. Research may be required. Libraries, books, and magazines may be a great resource if the information is current and credible. The internet is the fastest growing source of information. However, it may be incorrect or dangerous. Never assume it is automatically trustworthy. Check the credibility in the URL or the address on the internet for clues such as .edu, an educational site, or .ca, a Canadian site, .gov, a government site, .org, a nonprofit organizational site. Be cautious with .com, commercial organizational sites, as they're also selling products. However, it still might be a good resource. Online Therapy User from the University of Regina is a free service which involves reviewing educational material online with the support of a cognitive behavioral therapist. These courses help with our thoughts, behaviors, and physical symptoms. Along with chronic pain, we often experience anxiety and depression. The Chronic Health Conditions course, including chronic pain, helps us address and manage our pain and mood. Our X files from the University of Saskatchewan has a comprehensive free PDF called Pain Links, Resources for Those Living with Pain. Audiobooks such as Living a Healthy Life with Chronic Pain is an all-encompassing self-management resource and is available as a free PDF. 
the YouTube video, Understanding Pain in Less Than Five Minutes and What to Do About It, is a relatable video about chronic pain and self-management. Support groups can be pivotal in helping us feel validated and not alone. Today, I focused on Saskatchewan resources and presenters. Sask Pain links people living with pain, families, and healthcare providers with information about Saskatchewan health services, educational opportunities, and research. It is a hub of information about pain for people living in Saskatchewan. Improving Pain in Saskatchewan collaborative research team supports communities to make services for pain management better. They bring people together, create safe places for discussion, planning for action of pain a voice. Their Facebook page has many links with addressing a wide variety of topics and resources for pain management. The Red Cross Friendly Calls program matches volunteers with seniors providing new social connections through a weekly phone call. The website information here guides you to locate the Friendly Calls program for Saskatchewan page. TV channels such as AMI's program, hashtag I got this, allows you to meet people who have discovered ways to cope with a physical disability or mental health challenge and move forward with their lives. Some speakers are from Saskatchewan. Podcasts such as Put It Together with Daniel Garza are conversations with guests from all walks of life to discover their journeys and struggles and how they ultimately put it together. Episode number 230 highlights a Saskatchewan speaker. Our sister project to these webinars is a new series of podcasts called Your Partners in Pain, whose goal is to build a virtual community for people living with pain. This self-care cycle helps us to take action to be good self-managers. I must admit I was reluctant, or perhaps more afraid, to try new therapies thinking my pain would flare. I've benefited from referrals to the pelvic floor pathway and the spine pathway years ago, and have referred to the online therapy user program last year. To further improve my chronic pain management, I self-referred to the Medication Assessment Centre this spring. Since then, I've experienced a significant reduction in my pain level and improved quality of life with their help to make slow and steady changes to my uh, self-management techniques. This presentation is not an exhaustive list of all the chronic pain resources available in Saskatchewan, but hopefully it's a good start to your personal journey with self-referrals and self-advocacy. So in summary, when considering a referral, it's important to do some research into who you are choosing to seek care from and what treatments they're providing. New therapies can be intimidating or scary. Research can seem overwhelming. Seek out support when considering or trying new therapies. There's no easy button to cure chronic pain. It takes daily work. I've watched the YouTube video listed here again many times as a reminder of holistic ways to self-manage my pain and help myself feel validated. I continue to work with and research more therapies and that's why I choose to stay connected with people who are treating and living with chronic pain. And I hope you will too. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Thank you, Tracy, for that excellent presentation um, with um, just a wealth of information. And I understand that you have uh, put together a, uh, a um, uh, oh, sorry, a document that, or there's a document that will be shared after, which is pain links resources for those living with pains from the rx files and celine i believe you'll be sending that out with the email after the session yeah, so it has all those great links on it and extra um extra resources that uh, that tracy mentioned in her excellent presentation any questions for tracy um tracy i really i really enjoyed your uh piece around hints on how to check if information on the internet is good or not good and because uh, we know there's so 
so much out there and and uh, and some of it's garbage in a word. So um, at the end of the session today, I'm going to share with all of you a couple of um, links that I learned about in the pain, uh, the recent pain, uh, World Pain Summit from the um, Alberta Pain Society. And because these are reputable links with inf with useful information that you can trust. Okay, so um, if you come up, oh, here we go. Um, Susan asks, Tracy, can you tell us more about the Lume Lumeca? Is that how I say it? Physician Consult Service. Lumica, yeah. Lumica, thank you. Um, so basically, when you uh, um, go onto their website, and I put the HTTPS only because it's the secure um, link, uh, you'll initially have to do some login information, and then you'll speak to a care coordinator. But you could be speaking, um, getting I guess, connected to, depending on your symptoms, you could be speaking with a cardiologist. And so it's been interesting because I've had patients who have um, gone through it and some of it is staffed by uh, family physicians. So some of the providers in the health and wellness clinic that I work in in Yorkton will take three hour shifts. And so there was um, quite a few people in Saskatchewan who lost a family physician and they needed prescriptions refilled. And so they, they were able to call uh, Lumica or Lumeca, I think that's how you say it. Um, I've heard it both ways. And they had excellent care. And some were referred to their own cardiologists who happened to be also taking a shift that same day. So it was really patient-centered and excellent care that um, came about from it. And I think the follow-up question from Susan, is it free? Yes, there was no charge for people. And is it Canadian physicians that you're connecting with? It's Saskatchewan. Oh, Saskatchewan. Oh, so they've got a fee structure there then. Yeah. yeah. And you can actually go on to their um, lumica.com and you can see who the physicians are and who has spearheaded it and who's, um, I guess, organizing it. Um, I just have a just one more question. I don't want it to hold us up too long, but is do they do they provide for some continuity of care? So do they connect with your own family physician if you have one? Yes. So both eight one one and um, Lumaca, I have seen consultations written in that got sent to the family physician and was in the EMR that I could read the follow-up. And so that was how I got digging a little bit deeper into 811 and what was available because I was reading a consult from 811 and the other one was from Lumeca. That's good to know because that continuity is so important mm -hmm. uh, all the time, particularly if you have uh, issues with uh, chronic pain for living with it. Um, Donna Lazurko has said another pain management procedure that she has used is reflexology. Very helpful for me in controlling chronic knee pain. Great. Thank you for sharing that. And everyone says, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for the information. And that PowerPoint presentation will be available too. Yeah. And then if you have something, um, a burning question pop in your mind, put it in the chat and then I'll try to remember to get to it. Our next speaker I want to introduce is, um, I'm going to say my friend and colleague, Ross McCreary. Um, in 2006, Ross was diagnosed with the rare disease CRPS, which stands for Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, um, with few treatments and no cure, for the, no cure for the debilitating chronic pain condition. Ross noticed a need in the community and increasingly engaged in advocacy efforts which is how I initially met Ross, because he was pretty much running the show on continuing ed for CRPS in the province. In 2016, he founded CRPS Awareness Day in the province of Saskatchewan. The purpose of this initiative is to educate the public and raise awareness for those living with the disease. Ross also serves as a board member for the Saspeen Foundation and as a patient family advisor. In this role, he hopes to help improve and change the lives of those living with chronic pain. His other advocacy efforts include speaking engagements and serving as a voice for other rare disease and chronic pain sufferers who don't have the ability. 
He is the author of several published uh, pieces and has appeared in televised programs. He also believes in the power of a strong community of rare disease advocate, advocates with diverse voices, which encourages change and progress for all. He really, he really lives his philosophy. Therefore, through working with organizations such as Outrun Rare, International Pain Foundation and the Rare Disease Foundation, Roz remains well connected with rare disease and chronic pain communities from around the world. Thanks so much, Ross, for uh, sharing your personal story today. Thanks, Kathy. Um, as Kathy had mentioned, um, I was diagnosed with CRPS in, in 2006. And one of the I should um, have actually uh, mentioned in that bio is that um, of course, I am um, a member um, of SAS Pain as well, and doing a lot of work with the research uh, team that um, is is really making leaps and bounds in how we're going to be able to hopefully change, um, you know, or or help facilitate change uh, to chronic pain patients uh, here in the province of Saskatchewan, but. I was diagnosed as uh, as Kathy had said in 2006, and um, it sort of goes back to 2004 when I was when I started to present symptoms, and it really started with a simple uh, surgery that uh, I'm finding out now never should have happened to remove a cyst from my left wrist and. Uh, you know, as soon as that that procedure had taken place, within hours of the of the procedure happening, I started to get um, excruciating, burning, chronic pain, along with swelling in that limb. And in you know to to sort of move things along, because how do you sum up 17 years in in a in a in a short 15 minute. Uh, time frame you can't really but um, what ended up happening was that uh, within um, about a week we had gone back to visit the surgeon and ask some questions as to what might have gone wrong I was immediately dismissed to say that uh, you know it was just post-operative swelling and that uh, it would just have to subside and that sort of set off a long one year journey of seeing between anywhere between 15 and 20 doctors and specialists. Not one of them could uh, identify what was wrong with me. I was tested for every, uh, every rare disease, every, um, you know, I mean, fibromyalgia, every uh, to, um, cystic fibrosis to I mean everything under the sun I was tested for and nothing was was proving to show any anything in, in blood work and, and, and tests that were being run and so it it took about two years uh, before uh, you know of, of this revolving door of doctors uh, to, you know, to finally have a family friend of someone that we adopted with contact me and she was a physician out in Vancouver and she said, I know a chronic pain doctor out here that will probably be able to, to help you. So would you be willing to come out to BC and, and uh, see this, this surgeon and see this specialist? So I was on the next plane basically out to uh, Vancouver and within five minutes of walking through that door uh, into that physician's office, he diagnosed me as CRPS because he knew the condition. He basically said to me, there's nothing I can do for you. There is no treatment. There is no cure. There is no, uh, there is nothing that I can really do for you that hit me like and and then from that day forward that was really where i was able to um in you know i walked out those doors and felt like um reality had all of a sudden set in 
that that year and a half prior to going out to visit you know was sort of there was always hope there but there was a lot of hope lost in walking out of that doctor's office not knowing what next days of my life you know uh, were going to be like and and what that foreseeable future was going to be like but that was where my self-advocacy really kicked in and i had a decision to make from that day and that was to say i can either let this i can either let this life-altering diagnosis um go in a direction that i don't want it to go and give up on life or i could face the challenge go out and advocate for myself do whatever is possible to improve my quality of life the best i can so fast forward uh to coming home to regina and uh i saw a couple of doctors here got got in got put into a um program at Wascana Rehab to start working with physiotherapists because again there was really nothing that could be done from a standpoint of any doctor here there was you know there was nobody at that point that could help but there the one thing we did know was that I needed to get into therapy I needed to start trying to work uh, this limb and try to do what I, I could do to um, improve my pain situation i was able to then while i was a part of a program at wascana to find a surgeon here in and or i should say um this surgeon was linked to a neurostimulator implant that i now have implanted in my body to improve that pain i was i was sort of facilitated through a um, another doctor to go and visit this doctor to see whether i was a candidate to have an implant put in during this time the crps had spread to my leg i wasn't able to i was no longer able to walk and things were just gradually getting worse and worse. After visiting Dr. Kumar and having that implant put in, it was it was like a light switch had been turned on in my body. I was able to within within about three months, I was back walking and able to drop the cane that I had been using and that really started to put together this this team of other workers uh, or other healthcare professionals that i then worked with to try and figure out what was going to work for me that would be the one piece of information that i would that i would give any of you here that are listening to this is that what is going to work for one may not necessarily work for another but that being said don't give up on trying to try on trying to find that solution for the different pairings of things that you can do to be able to find a, or, or to be able to develop a quality of life that that will improve i'm having a diff, little bit of difficulty right now just in trying to get, get my thought process through because i'm having a pretty high pain level day today so um i'll try to keep moving things along here um after after i was able to have that um, neurostimulator implanted what i started to do gradually was knock on you know all kinds of all kinds of doors 
to try and find what was going to work for me because those doctors and and specialists and the people that I was interesting to to try and gain knowledge from that didn't know about the condition I couldn't blame them because they weren't educated they weren't educated in CRPS what I had to do was I had to educate them and bring forward what was going on with my pain and work with those doctors and see if there was anything that they could recommend to me after I, I started working with them and started dis describing to them what was going on with me and the, and the different things that I was feeling within my body and, that, and what that chronic pain was, was presenting. So I started searching out and working with this team of healthcare professionals that, in, and it was really a, a, a team of healthcare professionals that were put together via my implant procedure. And we started looking at different things like biofeedback. So breathing exercises, they started using things like that. I started, um, I also started to change my diet. Um, you know, my, my diet has gone back to almost, a, you know, sort of an 80% uh, natural to, you know, um, I've gotten rid of um, any pre preservatives and, and, and all those dietary changes. Um, I started doing like mirror therapy. I started doing things like, um, there, there was all these different things that I, I started putting together. And that was really what the key to my success and where I sit today lays was that I was able to start putting all these little building blocks together and build a personalized routine that I live by from day to day that improves my pain, that improves my pain and allows me a better quality of life. So, you know, before, when I go back 17 years, I was on very high doses of uh, pain medications that they were putting together. There was uh, different things like um, I had my narcotics. I had, I had probably about four or five different medications that at the time uh, that were all paired together to, to manage my pain. Upon doing all those, like upon the neurostimulator that I had implanted and putting in all of those different changes, uh, like exercise therapy and the, like I say, the, the biofeedback and all of those things, I was able to, to reduce my pain medications by almost half to almost three quarters at where I sit today. So oh, it is possible to reduce your medications, but you have to find a personalized, you, you almost have to personalize your um, pain management plan. It was at that point that I started, you know, once and once I had, I had really started to manage and, and better manage my pain, that I was able to really jump forward with being able to advocate and help others with chronic pain because I had seen those results in, my, you know, in myself and done the hard work that it requires to uh, be able to manage my pain and see that there are possibilities and, and things that you can do to, to better your pain. Um, it was at that point that I was able to really start working with others with chronic pain and advocate for, for those others through my Crips Awareness Day that I do here in the, in the province of Saskatchewan. I work with several different rare disease communities, um, you know, not only here in Canada, but across the U.S. Um, as well, and started to really advocate for education and awareness. Uh, because it really is this, this twofold that we need to sort of grab hold of is that I think a trap that we sometimes fall into as chronic pain patients 
And one of the things that I know I was very um, aware of early on in diagnosis was that I wanted to blame or I wanted to, or I wanted to, um, I wanted answers. I was angry and, and I was going through that grieving process for the first couple of years of diagnosis. And, you know, 17 years has really given me a lot, a lot of time to sit back and say, um, you know, this, this isn't about necessarily just me, but this is, you know, working together as a team through your health care provider, through us as patients with, that are, that are uh, with lived experience, and those who are, um, you know, it, it's that whole well-rounded work together team atmosphere that really, uh, that, that's really going to take us um, to the next step in being able to solve some of these issues with chronic pain. So sort of in wrapping things up, I, I know that I've had to sort of jump through 17 years, but um, you know, where I stand today is I feel like I have, I can be an active member of society, even though I still deal with my excruciating pain and there's no and there's no end to or there's no cure to what I have I can feel good and be a member of society at a higher functioning level than what I was before and I just want to sort of present uh, hope or or, or um, I just want to encourage people uh, that might be listening to this that have lost hope that you have hope and there is hope there to to, um, to definitely be able to improve your quality of life. So I want to thank you for listening and and if anybody wants to, I do um, have a blog. I have a way that you can get in touch with me if anybody wants to go to um, Kathy to get my contact information, uh, any of that, you know, they, people can reach out to me, talk to me. Um, but thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Ross, for sharing your powerful story for the work that you've done and the, the particularly the pearls that you've provided in terms of, of how to self-manage chronic pain. We really appreciate that today. And again, anyone on the call want to get in touch with, Ro with Ross, you can either get in touch with me or Celine, if that's okay with you, Ross, and we can we yeah. can share that information. Thank you so much. Um, so we're uh, just for the sake of time, we might go a few minutes over if that's okay. But it's Art and it's Dana, so it's going to be fun, and I'm ready. Um, and so we'll watch your um, your um, video, Dana, and then um, I'll just want to just do a little bit of wrap up at the end so I'm going to be quiet now and I'm ready hey guys welcome back to my studio it's Dana here I'm here to teach you art therapy and this is session number two here we go okay guys I'm filming slightly different this uh, today and I've got the uh, camera suspended above so let's see how this goes um I've got our cardboard here and because I want to work off of that again and right now what you're seeing is white paper towel I'm going to take that away right away what I have under here is words that I've written on the cardboard that describe how I feel about my disability and my current situation. So I've got the words angry. I've got the words bitter. I have the word depressed. I have the words in pain. I have the word or acronym FOMO for fear of missing out. I have the word isolated. I have the word lost and I have the word frustrated. I want you to take a moment to write down whatever you guys feel about your disability or your chronic pain or your depression or whatever it is. Write it down on your cardboard and then I'll come right back. Show you the next step. Okay, bye.
Okay, guys, I'm back. So now what I want you to do after you've written all those words on is I want you to take that same pen, marker, whatever you're wor we're working with, and I want you to draw a line. You're going to start on one corner and you're going to come across, even through the words, it doesn't matter, to there. Okay, just that one line to start. After that one line, I want you to take and meet where the corner is here, like the tip of it, and I want you to draw another line coming down on an angle so it's like looks like a slice of a pie. Okay, just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, can be a little shaky, doesn't matter, just get that line on there. Two lines, one from there to there, one from there to there. That's the second step, okay? Okay guys, I'm back. So now what I want you to do is, I want you to take one last look at these words and know where you started at and how you were feeling at the beginning of this project. And now we're gonna do the next step. So the next step is we're gonna be working in this top corner. And what we're gonna do is we are going to take a uh, blue craft paint, any kind of blue really will do. Mine is called Sailing Sky Blue, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pour it on this section. Okay, You're, you know I'm, I'm good for getting messy and that's what we're gonna do. So we've poured it on this section right on the words. So the whole point of the words was to show you where you're at. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna make things better for ourselves. So I'm gonna take it and again, smush it. You're gonna cover that whole corner section with the blue, okay? whole corner section. Just keep right on going. Okay. Quick, easy strokes. Fill it up. If you run out of paint, go back to the bottle, get more, put more on, keep smushing. You know I like smushing. Now the whole point of this is actually very therapeutic and I'll explain as I go. The whole idea right now is that you are taking that feeling, all of those feelings that you had, and you recognized them, you noted them, literally wrote them down, noted them, and now we're going to work on getting ourselves to a better place mentally in, in our lives and in this moment, okay? So keep spreading that blue. Once the blue is completely spread on that whole corner, you're going to let it dry, and then I'm going to come back to you, okay? Okay, guys, the next step is a gray strip. Now, that gray strip is going to be in the pie shape. Now, I went ahead and did it specifically because I wanted to show you my blue has not dried yet, and neither has my gray, but they are, as they're drying, I'm going to move on to the third section of this particular painting, and as I'm doing that, you guys can do your two sections, and then... Uh, the, when the video cuts back in, you will see my third section is totally green. I'm going with a lime tree green just because I like the brightness. And all of this will make sense as we go. So don't panic if you're thinking, what the heck? What is she doing? It's all good. I'll, I, I'll explain. So blue, then a pie section that's gr gr gray, and then a section that is green. Okay? And you'll see all those words suddenly are all gone. And then we're going to build from there, okay? So just bear with me, keep going, and apply your gray, and then your green. Okay. So I'm just still doing the green, guys, but I pop back on for a second because I wanted you to see I am still smushing. And I'm smushing it, obviously, with just my fingers getting right in there. That's that sense of playfulness and sense of fun. That's the whole, one of the whole points of this is to really get involved this way. But I also wanted to pop back on to say, if you see your words that you wrote on before start popping up through, just to add a little bit more paint over top and keep right on trucking, okay? We want them completely covered up uh, for the express purpose of building on top of where we were, how we were feeling, and where we're going to go with this, okay? So keep smushing. Okay, guys, this is shaping up beautifully. The next step is I'm using a bright yellow, and I'm going to just put it in the far corner here of my blue. Okay, now you always want to make sure that if you're going color on color, you make sure the color underneath is dry, or you'll end up with a hot mess and a different color than you're expecting. This should stay yellow, even though my fingers are green. This has dried on me, so I'm just going to extend this out and round it off. Keep in mind, I've just put this yellow on blue, and yellow. if the blue is not dry, then yellow and blue together make green, so that's not going to be a very happy uh, corner situation here. So you definitely want it yellow, as this is a sun that I'm dropping in. Okay, you might have recognized this now. Your, your painting is becoming a, a scene. If you hadn't recognized it yet, you've got your blue sky, you've now got your sun, you've got your lawn on this side, and in the center here is your pathway. So now you've got a whole canvas coming together that you might not have suspected what it was as you were doing it, 
but now you're seeing it's coming together and we're gonna do more so just bear with me there's my son okay uh, maybe a couple more little lines in here of his rays coming out really bright sunny day okay very forgiving does not have to be perfect in any way that's not the goal here the goal is to have fun and experiment with how to change all those negative things that we're experiencing into a positive so this is where we're at i'm next going to add in and drop in a character right there okay hold on hey guys we're back and what you'll see here is i dropped in my son which you see me do before now it is peering through a little bit the blue so i'm gonna have to go back over just that part with yellow but i will and i've dropped in a turtle here this is myrtle the turtle okay she is a pink turtle that is one of my characters in one of my children's books uh that i um do art and uh write for uh, or i i write and illustrate um so myrtle the turtle here is on the path she's at a at a good pace right now and the next step after this so i drew her in obviously because she's my character but i want you guys at this point to drop in your turtle at this point on the path okay wherever you want to place it on the path is fine doesn't have to be there it can be anywhere i just put her center because i'm also going to be adding in some words in, uh soon and the words are going to run along the path there there and here okay but first before i do that i'm going to add in some grass now obviously this is green so that's denoting it's grass but i'm going to go in and add some detail work so the detail work for grass is just little tufts of grass okay just to show that this is actually a field of grass. But actually, the other thing that I want to add in is long stems because I also want this to have some flowers here. So I'm just going to add some stems in that are taller here and there, some random stems. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to add in the flower on top of those. So you guys can do that next is just grab any color marker that works for you. I did a light green for a reason of the base and now I'm going in and I'm adding these little tufts of grass and I'm gonna add in the few flowers that I'd like on this field as well. So you guys can do your grass any way you want, whatever works for you, just as long as you've got some, some grass sprouts coming up there. And yeah, that will be the next step. So we're just gonna add in some, some grass and some flowers. So. Go ahead and do that and make them be whatever you want them to be of flower color and I will come back to you. Hey guys, just popping back on for a quick second to say I'm also adding some leaves in on my flowers and I'm just right now doing some little veining which basically means I took an opposite color from the one I was using which was a lighter green and a different green from my background. I put it in as a leaf and I'm just using this dark green again to go back over the light leaf and draw in some veining on the leaves for some little bit of definition, a little bit of cool design. And it doesn't have to be difficult, just a couple little lines here and there to denote that it's actually a leaf. And it's different from the actual part of the flower that is going to have the head on it. And by the way, you can start picking your colors as to what you want your flowers to be, your flower heads. And again, we're going to go super simple. Um, we're going to just do round-headed flowers or you can do tulips, whatever floats your boat. And again, nothing uh, that is going to be difficult or hard or, or, or traumatic for you to get through. It's very, very simple, very playful, very fun. And the best part about this is it's all very forgiving. Okay, I'll be back right away with flowers. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm just popping in the color for the flower. For me, I've chosen to go with a purple. And so basically, I'm literally just drawing on a quick little flower here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get a pop of color that's different from what we've experienced so far on the canvas. Uh, so I've got some tulips in here, very simple and easy to draw. I just sketch them in. Uh, they don't, again, have to be difficult. Just easy breezy flowers floating in the wind. And I've got another, I guess, a round one here again. Uh, this guy's looking a little out of shape, so I'll just correct him. And again, that's how nice it is to do this, is that it's it's so very easily correctable. There we go. And one more tulip in here. Just like that. Okay. Okay, so now our flowers are done. So our next step is I'm going to bring in some words um, to put alongside Myrtle the turtle as she's on her journey here. Hold on. 
Okay, guys, I'm back. So this is my painting, and this is what I'm hoping you guys will have reached as well. Um, having said that, whatever way this turns out, it is very forgiving. The point is you spent time and, and your beautiful, beautiful energy and your lovely, lovely uh, 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 moments in a day on something that is just engaging and playful and fun and honestly the therapy of art is just that we wrote words that were maybe hard for us to write down the depression and the pain and the isolation and all the things the FOMO fear of missing out and then we went back and we started laying in our color over top of those words not to make them disappear but to make them be valid and that we sat with them and that we experienced them and then we built on them. We didn't erase them, we built on them. We separated ourselves from that pain and those feelings for a reason so that we could come to us a, a better place. And our better place ended up being blue skies and a gray road and, or path and a field of beautiful flowers and Myrtle the turtle or whatever you wanna call your turtle and these words that I've written here, which is small, short steps, are still steps taken, which is extremely important to remember, not just when you have chronic pain, but definitely when you have chronic pain. And then also, a slower pace is still forward progression. That is so, so good to remember. It's so rich and worthy to remember because there are days, like today, I will be honest, I am in a a crap ton of pain today. I am not feeling well at all. Uh, we've got not great weather coming tomorrow. My body is swelling. I'm in a lot of pain. But this meant a lot to me to sit with you guys and go through these steps and show you what can become of those negative feelings. This is my positive outlook. This is where I have brought myself today and I've shared this with you for that ex exact reason. For you guys to understand that you don't you can sit with your pain and you can be in it and you can feel that pain and you can be miserable with it all bloody day long if you really want but why you'd want to i don't know when you can take your time and your energy and your focus focus in on the negative sit with it recognize it give it its moment but then take it and make something of it build in your day the positive over top of the negative that you're experiencing and you too should hopefully come to a place where you now have something like this that is a great message it's beautiful it's pretty it was <laughs> flat out fun for me to do again i loved explaining the steps as i went and i'm glad i spent less time physically showing you and giving you more time to work through but still seeing the outcome in the steps i wanted to do it differently this week for those reasons but i also wanted to engage on a different level with you guys so you'll have to let me know which one of art therapy session one or two you preferred and then i will go from there with whatever suggestions you have so i hope today you enjoyed it as well and i hope you, if you have any questions oh uh feel free to write down my email and i will give it to you as well and i'll send it out with the i'll ask selene if she can send it out with this um post for art therapy but it's d as in dana c as in cat f as in flair l as in larry y as in nancy or sorry, Y is in yard, <laughs> N is in Nancy, N is in Nancy. So dcflynn at live.com. And don't worry if you didn't get that, we'll put it in the post. Okay, so the last step, as always, you want to sign your work. Always, always, always claim what you've done. It's very important to do that. Very, very important to say, you know what? I did this. I made this out of the cardboard that it started on. Again, look at the beautifulness that this has turned into. So I'm going to sign my name here on the bottom. Claim it as mine. And Myrtle the turtle will walk on. She's got her little sunglasses on. She's got her fun little, her sneakers on. And it's taking her on those short steps at a slow pace, but still forward progression. This is the goal. And I too will get through my day. This too shall pass. And my pain will abate. 
and I will get through it. And I got through it this time with you guys, which makes me exceptionally happy. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this time. Let me know what your all your thoughts are on this this uh, particular piece of artwork and what you guys might want in the future. Uh, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much, Dina. And I'm so excited to watch you schmooshing that I did not introduce you. And uh, so Dina is a 40, you're 48 year old uh, artist, writer, photographer, been using art therapy as a way to cope with bipolar disorder since your diagnosis as a teenager. And in the last 10 years, art therapies also helped you manage your chronic pain from CRPS, fibromyalgia, migraines, uh, lipedema, and a whole host of other health issues. Art therapies made a measurable difference in her pain has been a game changer. And I can see that in the passion uh, that you, uh, that you, we watch as you make art. Um, Dana works with acrylics, metal, metallic acrylics, oil pastels, colored pencils, soapstone, balsa wood, clay crochet, uh, multimedia art journaling, journaling and graphic design. So there's actually nothing she cannot do. And I'm not showing her my stick man. Um, what I, we, it meant a lot to us too, that you um, sat and, and shared this with us, Dana. So thank you so much. And you've seen in the chat that uh, the many comments that people made um, in, uh, um, in terms of enjoying your art and your colors and your characters. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if I can choose a favorite project one or two, because anything you do where you're smushing, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> All good. So. Did, did you did you see my comment about smushers unite <laughs> yeah. i really oh. enjoy doing these for you guys i really enjoy the interaction but i especially enjoy just taking myself out of pain and i love that i have that option for you guys because i definitely know what it feels like to be caught in that so i'm very very glad that i have the option to be able to do this with you guys well thanks so much for sharing your talent with this Dana. And um, I want to thank Tracy, Ross, and Dana for sharing your expertise, experience, and insight with us. And a big thank you to everyone who has attended as well. So recordings of the webinars will be available on the SAS Ping website. We're just getting to that. Um, the link to these will be shared with you by email. You'll get an email tomorrow with any slides our speakers uh, have shared, <laughs> handouts on the activity and other, help, other helpful links. It will also include a link to the evaluation. Uh, so please be sure to complete the evaluation so that we can use your feedback to plan going forward. And the couple of there's you're going to receive a couple of links in that email too that I mentioned earlier uh, that I was made aware of in the pain uh, recent World Pain Summit. One is um, a YouTube channel by Dr. Andrea Ferlin. And Susan and I have had the opportunity to meet her. She's the loveliest uh, physician. She's a rehab doctor and a pain specialist from, um, from Ontario, works with the um, uh, University Health Network. And she's got a great YouTube channel. It's not just, it's educational, but it is focused for people who are living with pain. So you'll get that link. The other link you're gonna get, it's a, it's a pain self-management um, site and it's by this fellow from the United Kingdom named, named Pete Moore. And Pete's a very cool guy. He's got all these Harley Davidson bikes. And he just, he, he, in, uh, he, sort, of, he sort of did what Ross did, is he, in, he's trying to understand how to manage his pain. And so he's developed some really pragmatic resources and good um, things that you can belong to if you're personally living with pain to connect with others so that you can put your toolkit or your put the pieces together for your own self-management. So you'll get that link as well um, in the email. Um, so our next webinar is scheduled for Wednesday, November 3rd at 2 p.m. And the theme for the webinar is exercise. So thanks for sharing the information with your family and friends and social circles. Thanks for sticking with us. I did a terrible job keeping us on time but I'm, I'm, I, I do keep on time for other things. So anyhow, thanks again. I really appreciate the opportunity, but I don't think they're gonna ask me back, so. Thanks.